Hello, let's look at Bohr's atom and Bohr's model of the atom. And this is simply a symbolic atom using the nucleus as the center and having the electrons arranged in orbitals around that center nucleus. The basic premise for Bohr's model of the atom is that in the nucleus you will house the protons and neutrons, and the protons and neutrons make up the bulk of the mass of the atom. The electron orbitals, of which we will show three levels here, basically mirror the periodic table. The first row of the periodic table has two elements, and therefore would have two electrons, 1s2, and that's why there are two electrons available for the first orbital level in Bohr's model. The second row of the periodic table houses eight elements, and therefore eight electrons are necessary to fill Bohr's second orbital level for the electrons. And the third electron orbital would also hold eight electrons, as there are eight elements in the third level of the periodic table. So let's look at the basics of Bohr's model of the atom, and we're going to use aluminum for this example. We take some basic information from the periodic table, and we start with the atomic number, and that's 13 for aluminum. The AMU, or atomic mass unit, is the average mass rounded to a whole number. So in the case of aluminum, 26.98 is rounded up to 27. The proton number defines the element, and since the atomic number is 13, aluminum will also have 13 protons. The mass of the atom is created by the protons and the neutrons, and therefore with 13 protons, we need 14 neutrons to create the AMU of 27. And since this is a neutral atom, we're going to have 13 electrons to balance out the 13 protons, where negative and positive charges balance. The neutrons and protons are found in the nucleus, or center of the atom, and the electrons will be arranged in levels in the orbitals around that nucleus. And we'll look at how those electrons are arranged as we go through the rest of the elements of the periodic table. Bohr's model works best for the first 18 elements of the periodic table. Once you get past the fourth level of the periodic table, you start dealing with the d orbitals, and that gets a little complex. So for our purposes, we will primarily use Bohr's model only with the first 18 elements. So let's look at the first two elements of the periodic table. Hydrogen is atomic number one. It has one proton, one electron, and its AMU is one, so it has zero neutrons. So to build the model for hydrogen, in Bohr's case, we would have one proton in the nucleus and one electron in the first orbital level. If we were to look at helium, helium has an atomic number of two, an atomic mass unit of four, that gives it two protons, two neutrons, and since it is neutral, two electrons to balance out the protons. We would put the two protons in the nucleus. That would be joined with two neutrons. And then the first orbital level would actually be, be filled with two electrons in that first orbital level. So there we have hydrogen's Bohr model atom and helium's Bohr atom model. So let's do two more elements together and then we'll have you do some on your own. So let's look at lithium and when we go to the periodic table we see that lithium has an atomic number of three, an AMU of seven, that gives it three protons which we will place in the nucleus and it will have four neutrons, that's how its mass is seven three protons plus four neutrons, giving it a mass of seven. Those four neutrons also go into the nucleus. And then we have three electrons. Now the first two electrons go into the first orbital level, but the third electron will then begin the second orbital level. The first orbital level can only hold two electrons, and therefore the third electron goes into the second orbital level. So this is your Bohr model for lithium. Let's try beryllium.
atomic number four, four protons. They go in the nucleus of the atom. And then we have five neutrons because the mass of beryllium is nine and four plus five gives us the mass of nine. So those neutrons go into the center core or the nucleus of the atom. So we need one more neutron there. And then we have four electrons. Two in the first orbital level and two in the second orbital level. Now I put the electrons op opposite of each other because electrons are both negative and the electrons would repel each other. So they're pretty much going to stay as far apart as possible uh, repelling each other as they move through the orbits. So let's take a look at boron. Now boron's information is 5 atomic number, 11 AMU, 5 protons, 6 neutrons, and 5 electrons. So what I'm going to suggest is that you do this electron, this atom, Bohr atom model by yourself. So go ahead and pause the video and when you're finished making your Bohr model atom, you can then uh, turn the video back on and check how you did. So let's check how you did. Now I'm not going to actually put the protons and neutrons in the nucleus again. I'm just going to put 5 pet plus for the neutron for the protons and 6 0 for the neutrons. And then let's put our electrons in place. So we're going to put 2 in the first orbital level. And we would then need 3 to give us 5 electrons in the second orbital level. So how did you do? Well, why don't you go ahead and try carbon. Go ahead and pause the video, complete your carbon model of the atom, and turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answer. So carbon has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. So six protons and six neutrons in the nucleus. And then let's start adding in our electrons. We have two in the first orbital, and then four in the second orbital. And what I try to do when I put in my electrons in the, the, for the first four is I try to balance them out around the orbital level. So there we have the carbon-bore model. So why don't you go ahead and try nitrogen? and oxygen, and actually nitrogen is already completed for you. Seven protons, seven neutrons. We've got two electrons in the first orbit and five in the second orbit. So go ahead and try oxygen now on your own and see how you do. So go ahead and turn off the video for a moment. Fill in your oxygen orbitals and when you get your solution go ahead and turn the video back on and see how you did. So are you checking your answer? You should have eight protons and eight neutrons. You should have two electrons in the first orbital and six in the second orbital level. Here we now have fluorine and neon which will finish out the second row of the periodic table. So go ahead and complete both of these atoms on your own. Go ahead and pause the video when you've completed both of these um, Bohr atom models. Go ahead and turn the video back on and see how you did. So fluorine, 9 protons and 10 neutrons with a mass of 19. We notice that we have 2 electrons in the first orbital level, 7 in the second orbital level, which means there's one empty space. But if we look at neon, we have 10 protons, 10 neutrons, and 10 electrons. And when we do 2 in the first electron orbital and 8 in the second electron orbital, we actually have a full outer shell or valence shell. And that's why the noble gases, of which neon is one, they are stable because they have their outermost shell complete 
with eight valence electrons. This is also known as the rule of octet. So let's go ahead and look at the third row of the periodic table and let's look at sodium. Sodium has 11 for an atomic number, 23 for the AMU, and that gives us 11 protons, 12 neutrons, and 11 electrons. So if we start with the basics that we just completed, 11 protons and 12 neutrons, 2 electrons in the first orbital, and 8 electrons in the second orbital, that gives us 10 electrons. We need one more electron, and that will begin the third orbital level of the Bohr model. When we look at magnesium, we have 12 for the atomic number, that should be 24 for the AMU, 12 for the protons, 12 for the neutrons, 12 for the electrons. That gives us this arrangement of 12 protons, 12 neutrons, 2 electrons in the first orbit, 8 in the second orbit, and we need to add 2 more electrons to that next orbital level, bringing it to a total of 12 electrons. So I'd like you to go ahead and try aluminum and silicone and go ahead and pause the video as you complete the Bohr models for both aluminum and silicon. And when you are ready, go ahead and turn the video back on and check your work. So here you have aluminum. 13 protons and 14 neutrons. We arrange our electrons 2 in the first shell, 8 in the second shell, and 3 in the third shell for the 13. And for silicon we have 14 protons, 14 neutrons, and that gives us 2 in the first, 8 in the second, and 4 in the third, giving us a grand total of 14 electrons. Next we have phosphorus and sulfur. So go ahead and work through that on your own. Fill in the Bohr model for both phosphorus and sulfur. Pause the video now, and when you have two solutions completed, go ahead and turn the video back on and see how you did. So here we have phosphorus, atomic number 15, with an AMU of 31. That gives us 15 protons and 16 neutrons in the nucleus and we arrange the electrons 2 in the first orbit, 8 in the second orbit, and 5 in the third orbit. Sulfur, atomic number 16 with an AMU of 32, 16 protons, 16 neutrons in the nucleus, and the arrangement of electrons is 2, 8, and 6, giving us a grand total of 16 electrons. So let's go ahead and finish out the last two elements in the periodic table for the first three rows, and that would be chlorine and argon. So go ahead and complete both of these Bohr models. Go ahead and pause the video as you finish out both of these Bohr models drawings. And when you are completed, have completed the work on both of those models, turn on the video and check how you did. So with chlorine, we have 17 protons, 18 neutrons, giving us an AMU of 35, and 17 electrons. Our nucleus would house both the protons and the neutrons, 17 and 18. And our arrangement of electrons is 2 in the first orbit, 8 in the second orbit, and 7 in the third orbit. When we look at argon, we actually get 18 and 22 in the nucleus. Our arrangement is 2, 8, and 8. And like neon, argon is completely filled in its second shell, fulfilling the rule of octet. So hopefully this was a good way of you to get through the Bohr model for atoms, and I hope this will help you as you continue to explore the atom and atomic chemistry.